sports betting degenerates, welcome back to the Bust Your Bookie Show. We're back with our guy Spindoc. Catch him on Twitter at Spindoc Sports and sign up for his VIP. Absolutely killing it on the year. As you guys can tell, he always gives us great analysis, and it's definitely worth joining his VIP so you can get the best picks when he gives them out because he's typically analyzing the plays all the way up, sometimes till the final lineups are announced. So in order to get his best plays, you have to join his VIP. If this is your first time here, welcome to the Buster Bookie Show. What we do here, we give you our expert predictions along with the opportunity for a $40 giveaway. If we sweep the card going 4 0, I will cash up somebody 40 bucks. All that you need to do to qualify number one, subscribe to the channel, hit it right now. Number two, comment below 4 0, give us the good vibes. And number three, like the video. If you do all that and we sweep, I will cash up somebody 40 bucks. On the season, Spindoc is currently 2140 plus 43.89 units. Like I said, absolutely killing it. It's an honor to have him back with us. He's with us every single Tuesday, Saturday, and Sunday, and we're back. So before we get into today's plays, what are your thoughts on what we got coming up, Spin? Um, you know, there's some there's some good matchups tonight. Uh and uh, especially if you like overs, if you like watching uh, the excitement of guys chasing overs and big strikeout numbers, <laughs> we got a little bit of an unfortunate break that uh, that uh, these two, that uh, Sale and Blake Snell didn't go yesterday because um, I was all over that one in the VIP. Uh, we gave we we uh, we hit Sale nine uh, plus, we hit Sale ten plus, we hit. A whole bunch of different parlays. It, it was actually a really fun night, and that's what you can get when you have two aces going against each other like that. Because they, when they pitch against each other, you know, it's 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 like a competition. They make each other better, and that's what we saw. It was a heck of a game, and so um, you know, today there are guys that are of that caliber, but they're just not in the same spot. But uh, if you like overs, then you're gonna like then you'll like what you're about to hear. Absolutely. And even more incentive to join Spins VIP because he's only with us Tuesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Special day yesterday. And you guys would have been able to really take advantage of not only hitting some uh, you know, standard bets, but also some laddering going on as well. Oh, yeah. So even more reason to join. All right, let's go ahead and jump into today's four plays for today. First one we're looking at Houston Astros, 63 and 55 on the year, taking on the Tampa Bay Rays, who are 59 and 59. We're looking at the lefty, Yusui Kikuchi, 5-9 record, 4.62 ERA, 1.33 whip, 149 strikeouts, and we are looking at a strikeout line of 7.5. Over, under, break it down for us, Ben. All right, well, um, it's against the Rays, so you can probably guess um, is that this is an over spot for sure for me. Uh, right now, it's, it's, it's kind of split. Um, it's at 7.5 on BetMGM. At some nice plus money it's at uh six and a half on FanDuel at uh decently juiced minus 146 so when i uh, play vip or, or or go give any vip plays minus 145 is the highest juice that i will ever give uh for a standard play after that we start modifying our unit sizes just because of uh, the win rate that you need and factors that can take place. Uh, long story, but um, so six and a half or seven and a half, uh, I would advise you to take them both. Uh, the the Rays, uh, I've talked about it on this very show, talked about this on other shows elsewhere ever since the trade deadline. This team has been gutted. They have uh, they all many of their high contact guys, with the exception of Yandy Diaz, have been traded or uh, are gone. So now they have guys that just have insane whiff rates, like Jose Siri, uh, like Jose Caballero, like Taylor Walls, like Alex Jackson. All of them are projected to be in the lineup tonight. Every single one of those guys has an extremely high whiff rate to pretty much every pitch, and. Uh, that's also not good when you're going against a curveball specialist like Kikuchi. Um, he does throw it primarily to right-handers and carries a healthy 27.8% whiff percentage. You go on the other side and you look at the uh, whiff rates to the curveball to this team, and oh boy, um, there are some stiff ones out there. So, um, <clears throat> and that's up and down the lineup. That's not just the guys that I talked about. So, 
Uh, you know, I, I, I talked about Siri. League average whiff rate against a against a curve is about 33%. Siri's at 47. Caballero's at 40. Taylor's at 40. Walls is at 36. They can't hide all these guys. So even if even if those four aren't all in the lineup, you're probably going to get two, maybe three. You also have guys like Curtis Mead, who plays every day, who's uh, who's who's in the 30s for whiff percentage. And the other thing with the Rays recently, uh, especially post trade deadline, is that they've gotten into this uh, cycle of where they don't uh, swing inside the zone, get down in counts, and then start swinging. So it's no surprise that both their zone contact and their contact outside of the zone are both well below league average. Um, outside of the zone, last two weeks, 54.6% compared to a league average of 62.4. That's uh, second worst in baseball. And then their uh, contact rate inside the zone is 83.4, which is third worst in baseball. So, uh, you know, if also, if you look, if you look at average K's per nine and you look at the top 10 one name that you wouldn't necessarily expect to see is Yusei Kikuchi um you know he he was uh he, he was kind of hidden uh out in Toronto kind of was in that middle of the pack but has really really been turning it up since being traded uh, to the uh, Astros. He also just torched this same or similar Rays lineup for 11 not too long ago, back on August 2nd. So um, the fact that they did not adjust him in this one and actually moved him up in a, in, in uh, the case of Ben MGM at the moment to the seven and a half uh, after facing this same team less than two weeks ago, um, that tells me something. Also, what tells me something is that his hits prop is down from the usual five and a half it's at to four and a half, and that his uh, earn runs prop is sitting very, right where it's been at two and a half. So um, th th there's just too many holes in this lineup. So you can pay the juice if you want at the six and a half, or uh, you can wait and you can wait till you get seven and a half, or just take uh, eight plus at a uh, plus price. So uh, you say Kikuchi, over either six and a half or seven and a half. Um, the six and a half is probably a little too juicy for my liking, but I will. I would rather just take it up one strikeout and uh, play the eight plus. Lock it in for the show officially. We will take over seven and a half at plus money as our first play of the day. All right, play number two. We're looking at the Seattle Mariners, sixty three and fifty six, taking on the Detroit Tigers, fifty six and sixty three, and we're looking at Tarek Skubal. The lefty, 13-4 and four record, 2.57 ERA, 0.93 whip, 171 strikeouts. And we are staying with the 7.5 line. That's his line here. What are we doing with Mr. Scooble? All right. So I've talked on this show and others before about my no under island and how the Mariners are still firmly entrenched on it. So you know where we're going with this one. We're going over. Um, right now it's at plus 110 on BetMGM. I would expect this to probably hover in the uh, plus 110 to minus 115-ish range throughout the day. Uh, the seven and a half is probably where it should be. So look, um, this is also a back-to-back, -back, but it's but it's also a difference in that it's a road to home back-to-back. -back. Scoobal at home this year, my goodness, um, he has been just absolutely dynamite. Uh, division rivals, Kansas City and Minnesota, both of whom are low strikeout, he torched for eight. He hit the Dodgers for eight. He hit the Phillies for seven. He, he actually hasn't had under seven strikeouts in a home start in a long, long time. I also go and I look and I see that his outs are very firmly set at 18 and a half, indicating about a six-inning start. His walks, <laughs> excuse me, are set at the usual one and a half that they're at, but they're heavily juiced to the under. Um, you know, the, the Mariners overall have been better swinging the bat. They've been better. But the problem becomes is that they are still significantly under league average in contact rate inside the zone. Only 83.6% in the last two weeks compared 
to a league average of 86.4. Why that matters is that um, Scooble can just be absolutely dominant here. Scooble only allows a zone contact rate of 73.8%. That is almost 10 percentage points uh, under MLB pitcher average of 82%. That's phenomenal. So when you think about it, throwing a, a just a regular pitch in the zone, like in, in in the strike zone, in some cases right in the middle of the strike zone, and having a contact rate for the whole season on just over 2,100 total pitches of almost 10% under league average, you combine that with a Mariners team that is one of the worst teams in baseball, even still after the moves they made at the trade deadline for making contact inside the zone, and this is a good matchup. Um, you know, sometimes the back-to-backs matter uh, because you see a guy and then, you know, you kind of figure him out a little bit. But Scooble's a guy where even if you do figure him out, that that four-seam and change-up combo is just wicked. Um, just absolutely wicked. His change-up carries a 47.7% whiff percentage. That is just way above and beyond MLB average of 33. His slider, which the league average is about almost 33% as well, he carries a whiff percentage of 35.9. So um, don't let the back-to-back -back fool you. In my opinion, th the Mariners are still the Mariners. They're still on no under island for a reason. Zone contact, it doesn't make a difference whether you're facing somebody second time, third time, fourth time. If you're going to throw in the zone and you're going to get that low of zone contact and you're facing a team that only makes zone contact that 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 little um that's an over that i want especially especially when you give it to me at plus money so it's at plus 110 for over seven and a half right now on bet mgm that's the, then that's where we go lock it in we're taking over seven and a half for mr scooble as our second play of the day all right, play number three. We're looking at the Pittsburgh Pirates, 56 and 62, taking on the Padres, 67 and 53, 840 Central Time. And we're looking at the righty Michael King, nine and six record, 3.34 ERA, 1.18 whip, 151 strikeouts. And this is our number, at least three out of the first four, seven and a half. Break it down for us, Ben. Again, going up, up and over. I told you if you liked overs, this would be a good one to watch. Look, um, this is also a back-to-back. -back. This is another one, but this is also a road to home back-to-back. -back. Now, here's the key for this one is that it is rare. It is extremely rare for a pitcher to get jumped in K's when he goes on a back-to-back, -back, um, regardless of the scenario. Normally they keep it stagnant. Um, or in some cases, if they think that 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 the opponent that the opposing team is is gonna figure him out. They may even drop it. That didn't happen in this case. King was a six and a half on August 7th uh, when he faced Pittsburgh at, in Pittsburgh and got seven Ks. Now he goes home in his very next start uh, six days later and they jump him to a seven and a half. What they also do is his outs are at 18 and a half, which is, where, uh, which is up from where they've been. His hits allowed, which has been hovering between five and a half and four and a half, is at four and a half. Uh, his earned runs, which is hovering between two and a half and one and a half, is at one and a half. You see where I'm going with this. Uh, there is just a lot of potential for strikeouts here. The other thing with King is that he has been very sneakily putting together a very, very good season. Um, doesn't get a lot of fanfare out in San Diego, especially when he pitches behind Dylan Cease, but he has been quietly putting together a very, very good strikeout season. Um, his changeup, which is his primary put away pitch, he uh, gets a 36.9% whiff percentage on that. That is what he primarily throws to lefties, to righties. It's a sweeper that uh, he gets a 34.3% whiff percentage on. Now, um, you know, you go up and down the Pirates lineup and um, you know, they they did make some moves at the deadline that did make them a better overall team. But you look at some of these guys who could be in the lineup and you look at O'Neill Cruz, who's up at near 40 percent with percentage to a changeup. You look at Michael Taylor, who might be in the lineup, who's 
over 45%. Uh, Brian Reynolds is over 40%. Brian De La Cruz is at 37%. I mean, all these guys or most of these guys are going to play. So when you have that high of a whiff percentage against the primary pitch that this pitcher goes to, you have a guy who on a back-to-back, -back, the books jumped up one. Um, and you also have a team that has had a much higher whiff percentage recently and the seven and a half is definitely not too much for this one. Um, this this one, I'm going to monitor this one throughout the day, but this actually could, could, and I stress could, potentially be another ladder spot, just like Chris Sale was for, uh, for us in the VIP last night. So again, very rare that you see a guy jumped up on a back-to-back, -back, um, regardless of what team it's against. So over seven and a half is the official play, but just know that throughout the day, I am looking to see if maybe we can go even higher than that. I love it. Over seven and a half at plus money again for Mr. King as our third play of the day. And another reminder, join the VIP because Spin will be checking it out, the final lineups, everything from the weather, umpires, et cetera. So possible ladder situation here. All right, our fourth and final play now, we're looking at the Chicago Cubs. Going against the Cleveland Guardians. Cubs are 59 and 61. Guardians 70 and 49. 540 Central Time. And we're looking to Javier Assad. The righty is 5 and 3 with a 3.24 ERA, 1.36 whip, 90 strikeouts. And we're looking at a 3.5 strikeout line on Mr. Assad. Break it down for us. All right. Well, um, I said you'll like overs uh, up until now. This. This line actually isn't even too high, to be honest with you. Um, Assad, uh, guys have him figured out. Uh, over his last uh, six starts, strikeout totals of one, three, got five one time against Kansas City, uh, two, zero, and zero. Uh, and that is not what you want against a team like the Guardians that does have the fourth best contact rate in Major League Baseball last two weeks. They actually have one of the highest contact rates for the whole season. They also have the fourth lowest swinging strike rate. They're one of only uh, a few teams that are under 10% for overall swinging strike rate. And the other thing that they do is they swing a lot outside of the zone, 35.5% uh, compared to a league average of 32, but they make contact 72.9%, which is second in Major League Baseball and actually well over 10% above league average. Why that matters is um, Assad does not get a lot of whiff in the zone. So when he uh so he operates in the zone just above league average, but he allows 84.8% zone contact. That's above MLB average of 82. It's actually been even worse lately. It's been like closer to like 86, 87. <laughs> Excuse me. So he also allows 71.7% contact when teams chase. That's been even worse lately too. So you factor all of those things into play. And you also look at that Assad is primarily a sinker baller. And so I've talked about it on this show a few times is that, um, it, it is that when you, uh, when you do, or when you're a sinker baller in that, when that's your primary pitch, you're not actively trying to get strikeouts. What you do is the sinker is used to set up your other pitches, but you go up and down the Guardians lineup and you look at what their whiff percentage to a, to a sinker and to his other three primary pitches, which is basically just a cut fastball and a very, very mild four seam fastball. Most of these guys have whiff percentages under 10% to this pitch, uh, especially guys at the top of the lineup. So three and a half is definitely not too big. We get uh, the Guardians at home against a guy who's not really actively trying to strike guys out. And on Bet Rivers right now, under three and a half is minus 105. So that's a fair price to pay. And that's where we go. Very nice price. Under 3.5 for Assad as our fourth and final play. All right, quick recap. We're taking the overs on our first three plays over on Kikuchi at plus money, Scooball over at also plus money, and King also. All those are seven and a half at plus money, and then Assad under 3.5 as our four plays for today. Reminder set your notifications. We're coming out with videos every single day to baseball. We are done with the Olympics. However, we are starting up WNBA, and I'm coming out with my NFL preseason week two video tomorrow as well. Our motto on the show is to bust your bookie. Let's go for the 4-0 sweep today. Let's do it.